Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams, and it's a privilege today to be joined on the summit on this chilly day here as baseball season is underway by the head baseball coach of the Northeastern State Riverhawks, Coach Jay Kendrick, in his seventh season with the program. Coach, I know it's it's kind of a, a bit of a snow day as, as it's cold throughout the country and especially in Oklahoma ice and snow everywhere. We have some precipitation coming down outside the window where I am. I'm not sure what it is. Snow, sleet, some kind of wintry something. It's white. I do know that. But at this point, though, having a day where you can look back on your non-conference portion of the schedule, which the Riverhawks have now finished nine and three on the season. Coach, that's a pretty good start to the schedule. Yes, sir. We're excited about uh, the improvements we've made early on in the year and, and the start that we're off to. So it's always nice to to feel like you were you were prepared to to play early on in the year it's it's been a good team effort so far again nine and three having won seven of your last eight too but there have been some pretty good individual performances as well brock reller who was named not only the miaa hitter of the week for the second consecutive week but the ncwba Division two player of the week, national player of the week. And I'm going to look down and read these numbers because they're just off the charts. Okay. At last week, he had 13 RBI, three homer, five triples. That's just an incredible number in and of itself. There are players who won't get five triples in a career or a season, much less in a week. 12 runs scored. Oh, by the way, he also hit for the cycle in a nightcap of a doubleheader against McKendry. And then the next day came back and had a game-tying grand slam late in that contest, which got the rally going, and you ultimately won that. Brock Reller's just had a a fantastic open to this season, just in 12 games, my goodness, in the last week alone. Pretty tremendous when you read him off. It's uh, (laughs) So I guess I'm glad he's on our side. He's he's a tremendous worker, um, really, really talented, special player, a lot of tools that, uh, I mean, he can run. He could throw, and obviously he's got got power at the plate. So, yeah, really tremendous. Really happy for for what he's been able to do early in the year. Coach, uh, another one of those players we talk about individual performances, and I know, again, it's a team effort, but uh, you have to look at some of these things. Blaze Brothers playing for you well also and garnering some national attention over the course of the last week as he's been selected to play in the MLB draft league season, which opens up in June. Talk about what that means and, and, and his performance for you. Well, great opportunity for him, first and foremost. And, you know, you've got to be a talented player to get recognized or asked to play in that league. Last year was uh, the first summer of the MLB Draft League. Uh, it was put together. Carrick Jackson used to be the head coach at uh, Southern University, and he's now the president of that league. And him and I became uh, friends. We were in the same uh, leadership head coaching cohort together. And uh, we didn't have anybody in the league last year, uh, player-wise. Obviously, we had Nick Swanson drafted, uh, and he would have been a good fit there. But uh, – Blaze with the year he was able to have last year uh, opened some doors for him and, and he's going to have an opportunity to get in front of uh, the goal of the league is really that players get the opportunity to get in front of every MLB organization uh, throughout the summer and uh, give them the best opportunity to get a shot to continue to play baseball uh, past college. It's a fantastic opportunity, and, and I know with as many teams as there are, not only Division Two, II, Division One, and throughout, down to JUCO with baseball players all around, and uh, a great, again, opportunity to get a little bit more focus on him individually. We're speaking now with Jake Hendrick, who is the Northeastern State baseball coach in his seventh season with the program here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please, do consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond coach you know i'm talking about some individual players but again hitting 355 as a team right now that's tops in the miaa heading into league play it's in the top 15 in division two as well so uh, your your players are connecting with the ball right now yeah hats off to uh, my lead assistant uh, james colden and the effort he puts into getting our guys ready for each and every game uh puts together a great game plan and then ultimately it's up to our players to uh, I think put the work in first and foremost, and then uh, be able to go out and execute. And yeah, you can see, I mean, we've had eight guys that have play, started and played in every single game, uh, which I think is a, is a luxury to have guys that, you know, that number 
eight, eight guys that have seen their name in the lineup every game just tells you those guys are producing and, and preparing correctly. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the numbers speak for themselves in the first 12. And, Coach, you talk about that. That is a luxury, too. And it's something – how important is that to, to be able to have that consistently throughout the season then to be able to, to look and know it's the same players over there? You know, you, you always – uh, hope against injury or anything like that. But talk about the importance of having that consistency. Well, we returned five guys. You know, five of those eight are returners from last year that uh, were uh, significant pieces to a very successful year. And and so the the three new ones, uh, Brock Reller, uh, which we mentioned earlier, Matt Kaiser, a junior college transfer from Seminole State, and then Cade McGrath, actually a, uh, in conference, transfer from Emporia so uh, those three guys really added a bunch but it is it is nice to 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 lean on those guys Uh, I think that it it probably goes both ways you know if your name's getting written down every single day then there is a a level of ownership the players have to take on showing up to practice and doing the early work and doing the little things consistently so that uh, there's not a question that uh, their name in the lineup is the right decision and and they're going to carry some of that burden of the the wins and the losses. Coach, the pitching staff doing pretty well for you as well. Uh, an ERA just a little bit above four right now, but opponents batting average uh, at around 327. So consistent play also then when you have your, your folks coming out on the mound. Yeah, you know, that that's an area I'm really proud of our guys uh, the most. We, we do return a lot of pieces, but, you know, we lost Nick Swanson. Uh, to the Houston Astros late in the summer. Uh, TJ Mullins was a guy that was slated to be our number one on the mound. Um, and, and he ran into a back injury in January. And then Lee Callison is a guy that was slated to be our number one after that. Uh, and you can look down on that list. He has not thrown a single inning. He's dealing with some lat soreness. And so we've kind of slow played him coming back. Uh, and then Dakota Jones was our all-conference closer last year. Same deal, uh, dealing with a little bit of uh, soreness early in the year he's not logged an inning and so you take a lot of outs away from uh, that pitching staff and you know to me what they've been able to do early uh, by being competitive and, and keeping us in in games and hats off to our defense for making great plays behind them because we are fielding the ball really really good but uh, man that group really prepared hard and has stepped up uh, in sh- a tremendous way early Coach, I, I'm sure they've also, uh, you know, benefited a little bit from the fact that, uh, you know, you're putting runs on the board. <laughs> I mean, they got to go out Everything there with a little bit of easier. confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just you just can feel that you know the energy comes from our dugout on the offensive end, and uh, even in that game where we talk, you know, you talk about Brock Reller hitting the grand slam to ultimately bring us back, tie the game, and. We end up winning, but the pitching staff, they're feeling that, hey, if we can keep this thing close, we know that it's just a matter of time. And that is a really nice feeling because I've been a part of teams where the opposite, you know, you feel like you can't give up a run. Uh, if you give up any, you're going to have a, you're going to have a tough time winning. So uh, it's definitely, definitely a really nice feeling when you look down and see our ERA at 4-4 and our opponent's ERA at 9-1. That is pretty impressive, Coach. Well, let, let me ask you this then as we, we close our time together here on this snowy day. And uh, as the league schedule, getting ready to get into play, it's going to take place on Saturday. You mentioned Emporia State. Well, it's Emporia State as you head up there to uh, take on the Hornets in Kansas on Saturday. Talk about playing in the MIAA and, and this uh, start to the second portion of your season. I just think everybody in the MIAA does such a good job uh, recruiting and putting together talented rosters. And and so uh, to, to get off to a nice start and be nine and three is, is great. Uh, but the reality is, uh, you know, that the Hornets don't really care that we're nine and three. Uh, they're looking they're looking for ways to, to beat us and they're f- fully capable of doing it. So I think that uh, making sure that we stay diligent and and hungry is going to be the key to us continuing to have success. 
Coach, it's a privilege to get to visit with you again. The, the last time we had a chance to talk was audio only. So uh, thank you for being with me here on the yep. YouTube channel today and, and talking about the River Hawks. Success to you all as the season continues. It looks like your players are doing well to get things started, and the season has opportunity ahead. So the River Hawks, 9-3, and three, heading into MIAA play. Coach Jay Kendrick, thank you for taking time with us here today on the Summit. Thanks, Joey. I really appreciate it.